Hey there, welcome back to The Surge 2. Today we're going to have a little bit of a break from all of the dismemberment and excitement, although there will still be a good amount of that, because we've reached the Cloud9 bar, and it's time to enjoy the high life of Jer can push my buttons anytime. Bow chicka wow wow. Of Jericho City. Starting off with Jordan Black, who specifically told us not to follow her here. You following me around? I told you already, the monster belongs to me. Joke's on you. You happen to give me directions to this place. So I found my way here anyway. Taking care of business, what's it look like? Me and my guys are just about to kill the beast swiftly and mercilessly. So don't even try to mess with us. All hell's breaking loose at Gideon's Rock. And don't cut me out yet. This battle's far from over. I don't doubt it. I mean, you seem like a pretty capable sort. Name's Black, Jordan Black, AKA the Huntress. Mess with me and it'll be the last name you ever hear. I mean, I don't doubt that either. And speaking of which, if you'd like to work together, I'll offer you an olive branch once again. I told you before, the monster belongs to me, but if you go out there anyway, you're welcome to kick the other hunter's asses. Tell him Jordan sent you. Okay. That's odd. That's an odd thing to ask of me to do, considering you're all working together, but... I'll be keeping an eye on you. I suppose if I'm in the area, I'll make sure to tear them limb from limb, because it's... kind of what I... It's kind of what I do. It's kind of what I'm good that at. DJ can push my buttons anytime. Bow chicka wow wow. Yeah, by the way, why do you keep saying hey, darling, that? darling, and bring me a sparkle teeny from the bar, then we'll talk. What? Okay. I mean, I guess I can do that. She and I do share a haircut. I feel a connection. How about you, fella? You're looking pretty down. It's a party. Look lively. Hey, you there. The blurry one. I'm so smashed. I can't keep my mouth shut. I just keep blabbing on and on. And on and on, it's like a catch-20 something. Everything's going to hell, you know? I can't switch my brain off no matter how hammered I get. I know how you feel. So what's your deal then, sir? Your name's Dan Kadenakuji. Yoko's brother? Did you know Yoko Kadenakuji? His sis got a rep after her flame with Don Hackett. For what? I'm embarrassed with that girl. Okay. Well, that's weird, and a little more than I needed to know. I'm not even sure. You know, nothing makes sense. Okay, my company got this contract with AID a couple days ago. Earned myself some big bucks. But all I had to do was find a bunch of sick kids and get them sent to AID command to have their defrag cured. It's just that, you know, I never heard back from any of them. You know, I just want to spend my cash and turn off my brain. <laughs> I gotta stop thinking about this freaking kids. Well, coincidentally, I'm headed that way anyway. Not right now, but maybe a little later, so... I'll check it out for you if you want. Oh, wow, that's awesome. You're doing me a real solid. Cool. Um, I'd like some directions. <laughs> I have bigger stuff going on in my world. Right. Hey, see that crazy chick over there? That's my sister. Haven't talked to her in two years. <laughs> Good riddance. Well, but why, though? Is it because of the fling with Don Hackett? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to talk to anyone who's had a fling with Don Hackett, either. I feel like hanging around that guy is probably bad news. Or was bad news, I guess. So yeah, there's a lot of people to talk to here at this party. Lots of... <sighs> lots of interesting characters. Like this gentleman tending the bar. Ah, a new face. Haven't seen one of those in a while. We have some quite intriguing guests at this party. Too rich to worry, too poor to leave. Not me, though. I'll be long gone when the proverbial shit hits the fan. 
A man of my caliber requires the most exquisite piece of armor available. Sadly, my previous supplier was brought down by his lofty ambitions and the tip of a hunter's blade. Guess nobody else has the guts to go out there and do what needs to be done. Depends. Whose limbs do you need cut? And how many of them do I have to cut off for you? Also, how much are you going to be paying me to do this? Okay, but it's not going to be easy. Um, I should have told you before asking for help, shouldn't I? Don't worry. You'll do just fine. You know those gorgeous robot statues they have at Gideon's Rock? Their armor is simply impeccable. 24 carats of pure protection. Of course, you'd have to strip them for every single part. Mint condition. I think that goes without saying. So hit them with my sword until they come off and then give them to you. You got it. It's what I'm good at. Search and rescue, eh? Sounds like the adventure of a lifetime. You'll have your work cut out for you the way things are going. Here, take this. You'll need it. Hey, thanks, pal. So, uh, the highball here at the Cloud9 bar, for some reason, has the Peacekeeper. Remember the Peacekeeper from the Surge 1? I don't know how it ended up here, but I'm gonna buy it, because I like the Peacekeeper. And I miss the more dour attitude the Surge 1 had towards the world and the people living in it. Some folks have commented about how the characters in this game feel a bit like Saturday morning cartoon Come characters. Find more parts. That stuff's worth its weight in gold. And to some extent, I do agree. It's a little... There's a little bit of tonal dissonance going on here between the first game and the second game. But then again, maybe that's why... Maybe that's why the world is suffering, because nobody's taking the apocalypse seriously. You people know there are nanites out there, right? Huh? Oh, I'm not thirsty anymore, but OMG, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Well, I don't know if the horse would be too happy about that, but okay. The snacks at this party suck balls. I wouldn't finger this food for a million bucks. But man, am I starving. If this is really the end of the world, I want to pig out, goddammit. I need meat. Real meat. Special meat, you know? Uh... I think I know where I could go to get some of the meat you desire, yes. Awesome. Buy the prime meat at Petty's Delicatessen, okay? It's the best butcher shop at Port Nixon. Well, that's going to be a problem because I've I've put that place out of business recently, but I'll try. Have that noise. Who cares if the world ends? I'm rich as sin. Oh, OK. Well, I can see why your brother doesn't like you anymore. Had a row with my brother. Whatever. Let that old stick in the mud sulk for all I care. He cray cray. Uh huh. Okay. Party time! Party time. Let us just ignore that she has just said the word cray cray, or I suppose the words cray cray, and take a quick trip back to Port Nixon to go and get her, her meat. Which is a weird thing. Both for her to request and for our character to decide to fulfill for her. However, this provides me with an interesting chance to talk about how the world of the Surge 2 is now pretty much entirely open to us, now that we have reached the Cloud 9 bar. I brought this up briefly every now and then, but yeah, we can go wherever we want now. That, that whole stuff about going to AID Command, we have to do that in order to continue the game. In fact, this whole thing about going to take down this beast at Gideon's Rock, the game has implied that this is our new main quest, but it's actually not. We, we don't have to do this until later if we want, and at some point we do have to do it. But the order in which we can go about doing the various plot requests that characters have for us is interesting. It's, it's very interesting. Especially now that we know that Athena isn't even in this area anymore. I mean, technically speaking, uh, the last we heard is that she ran off towards the bar. 
but she might also have been taken to AID command, as we've just learned. So our actual goal here could be in either direction. And I think that's pretty neat. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, the, the Surge 1 was a completely linear game, obviously. I mean, you, you progressed from area to area, taking out all the enemies on one starting point to one finishing point. Discounting stuff like going to Creo World, for example, which was like, you know, an optional detour. I just find it interesting that, that they had an opportunity to to make one big diverging path, just one, and they took it, and they elaborated on it in a, a way that I think is pretty interesting. Of course, the, the reason I have decided to do things in this order is because the game is more balanced around doing things in this order. Were we to go to AID Command right now, we would eventually run up against a roadblock, um, again, because we do eventually have to do both paths. But everything leading up to what is essentially the plot gate, we could get done right now with very little trouble. But this little trip back to Port Nixon here also gives me a chance to top up on my tech scrap, get uh, upgrade parts and upgrade materials, and uh, explore the city just a little bit more, because, I mean, going to AID Command and Gideon's Rock, we're not going to see this part of the city for a little while. So we might as well say goodbye to it by killing everyone who's in it. Everyone who's still hanging around here, making the mistake of standing in our way. <laughs> but I guess I should also say, if I may hang it, hang a lampshade over my own recording, I should also say that this has been kind of problematic for me to record, because without this little detour to Port Nixon, the entirety of this episode would have been talking to people in the bar. This game's got a lot of dialogue in it, and a lot of various characters you can talk to once or twice and ask them a couple questions. Which is cool, it's cool, but it's also kind of hard to present in video form. <laughs> And so we're, we're just running around here on the streets one last time just so that this episode could have something in it that's not just standing around talking to people. Because I want to give Gideon's Rock its own episode. Specifically because Phil is going to be back for the Gideon's Rock episodes, but shh, Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Funny enough, with the addition of the DLC which has come out recently as of this recording, there are now more episodes of this Let's Play featuring Michael and Phil than there are episodes where it's just me by myself, which is kind of, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it, makes, it makes their appearances almost feel less special, but I like that they were so willing to hang out with me, even after insulting the Ger the <laughs> even after insulting the people of Germany. Uh... <laughs> And the best part, too, is the next episodes that I do with Michael and Phil <laughs> took place, we recorded them before the DLC came out. So I believe in the next couple of episodes, we talk about the upcoming DLC. Because at the time, it was upcoming, but now it's out. <laughs> and the whole timeline of the Let's Play has just gotten so confusing now. It's awesome. It's great. I recorded this like, like memento or something. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going back and forth b between like half, half remembered uh, recurrences of of the same stretches of gameplay. I feel like I'm going crazy trying to record this let's play. But the good news is, right? The good news is. The update schedule for the Let's Play should be a little bit more consistent from here, I hope. Because <laughs> I'm not sick anymore as of right now. I've got so many episodes prepared in advance to upload on a schedule, and I've got the whole game recorded now. So who knows? The Surge 2 might actually finish before it's been like a year since it started for once in my goddamn life. Anyway, with all that rambling out of the way, 
it looks like Penny's is under new management. Look at you, honey. You're thin as a rake. But don't you worry one bit. Jenny's delicatessen will put some meat on your bones in a heartbeat. Someone has to take those hungry people off the streets after all. I'm gonna guess that you're not selling man meat or long pork. Running an honest business. Unlike that bitch Penny, nobody's gonna lure innocent people into that old death trap of hers anymore. From now on, everyone gets what they deserve. No exceptions. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. It seems like she actually is just kind of picking up where Penny left off. But hey, at least she's not luring innocent people into the death trap. Only non-innocent people who presumably taste just as good. I hope. I hope they taste just as good. Would hate for the change in formula to ruin the business, so to speak. worry one bit. Someone has to take those hungry people off the streets after all. So, can I have a sample? Nope. Penny's prime meat is off the menu forever. Although, there's still some leftover Penny in the fridge. Oh, God. See you around, honey. All right. Well, I don't know if I want to... I don't know if I want to feed this to this cat no Kuji lady, but... Well, I, I guess Penny's gonna help us out post-mortem after all. Yikes. I'm back. I'm hungry AF. Did you get my snacks? Did you? Did you? Indeed I did, unfortunately enough. I hope you like it raw. Effin' finally. Oh, ugh. That was some good shit. Sorry, no leftovers. Well, that's probably the most horrible thing I've seen in my life. She didn't even wait for us to cook it first. Ugh. Let's go talk to the DJ. See what he's got to say about all this. Hey, pal, how you doing? Yo, what are you doing just walking into my inner sanctum? I don't even know if I can trust you. Tell me the password or get lost. Oh. Oh, oh, the vending machine. I remember. It's Keymaker. Well, what do you know? You passed the test. Looks like you've got good contacts. You might be just what the resistance needs. Um, what resistance? We're a group of top secret underground freedom fighters. So shush. Everything going on around us started with a power surge at Creo. After that, those damn nanites were unleashed. But there's more to it, much more. The government is trying to cover something up, something big. We have to fight the system with everything we've got. I'm a big fan of fighting the system. In fact, I've been doing it for two games now. Our numbers are still low. There needs to be a groundswell. We have to send a signal. Tell people to mobilize. But we're not going to do it over the airwaves. Can't trust modern tech. Not anymore. I agree. Especially when the whole nanite thing is happening. I'm with you. In that case, welcome to the resistance. First things first. Without a graffiti drone, you'll be completely out of your depth. Here, take one from my stash. It's a freebie, but don't get used to it. Now all you gotta do is leave the new resistance symbol all around Jericho. Can do. And, uh, the new resistance symbol might look a bit familiar to fans of the first game. Brother Eli killed his sister when he was a child. Fascinating. Lay some more truth on me, Radio Man. Jonah Gutenberg is hiding in this town. He's what?! Okay. Brother Eli killed his sister when he was a child. Well, I want to... No, let's perhaps go back to the other thing. Jericho City was built on a hellmouth. Well, that I would believe, at least. Okay, well, that's a pretty big truth bomb. I organized this raid myself. Needed a place to hide in plain sight. 
We even have an open bar. Just tell the bartender DJ Tala sent you. Yeah, I've already got my free sparkle teeny, thanks. Yeah, right. One. That's what they all say. This video game is weird. This is top secret stuff, champ. So zip it. All we need is a straight and simple paint job. Our founder, Dr. Chavez, chose the resistance simple. It's this branch thingy with leaves. It seems to hold special meaning for her. Just use your drone spray can module to leave our symbol wherever you go to spread our message. Come back and report to me regularly. The revolution will prosper. Well, well. Looks like Dr. Chavez and Project Resolve live on. How about that? Party on. Party on, Tala. That's a, that's a very strange cameo to be in this game, but thanks for the spray can drone. Now we can leave symbols everywhere. And, you know, do all kinds of weird Any offensive things. Those statues? Not quite yet. Although I'm working on it. Sure thing, buddy. What do you need to know? May I have another sparkle teeny? Name's Highball. I'm just a humble barkeep with a heart of gold. Now all I need is the armor to go with it. Don't care, Sparkle Teeny. Oh, that guy. I doubt this is the high point of his career. He's the only one at the party more grizzled than me. Oh, we've spoken. Sparkle Teeny. What? The actor, Kyle Baxter? He's a bit of a handful. Don't fall for his squeaky clean image. That guy's been in love with his own reflection for years. Hmm. Okay. Fine. Fine woman, that one. We have a bit of history. Don't tell my wife, okay? I don't want to think about that. That's a real robot? No kidding? I thought it was just another drunk cosplayer. I mean, it doesn't even have limbs, Highball. Come on. Have you been have you been trying your own sparkle teenies? He's a quiet one, that's for sure. But you know what they say. Silent but deadly. We should keep an eye on him. I'm not sure who he's talking about when he says the boring guy. Perhaps Dan. Bundle of fun, eh? Can't stand her shtick. I can't stand her shtick either. Well, I mean, we only just met. But don't you worry. I'll be keeping an eye on you. I ask a lot of questions. I'm sorry. Stay strong, gorgeous. I'll do my best. You know, I didn't even notice this guy standing here. But he looks so proud, and yet so easy to overlook. I know what you're about to ask, so how about I just go ahead and save us both some time, eh? Yes, I really am Kyle Baxter. The one, the only, the incomparable Iron Mouse. And no, despite my shredded torso, perfectly chiseled jawline, and brilliantly glistening teeth, I'm not really a superhero. I only played him in eight movies. Oh, and yes, I am still on the dating market. Oh, you didn't need to tell me that. I... I can tell just by looking at you. Uh, pardon me? Of course you should know me. I'm Kyle Baxter. THE Kyle Baxter. Don Hackett's Creo newsletter called me the last movie star. Are you trying to insult my artistic integrity? Because that's never worked. And don't try begging me for an autograph. I'm retired now. Well, no offense, Mr. Baxter. I'm more of a comic book kind of guy, but... All right, sure. Tell me your life story. I never quit acting. Acting quit me. Those bastards at the studio replaced me with some smarmy AI dummy. Of scrap never even joined the actors union they said it was because of my so-called drug problems and chronic paranoia but we both know they always had it in for me ah so this guy was a member of the rat pack so to speak makes sense both obviously if you want to find out more about the amazing adventures of iron mouse tm go to the comic book store in port nixon 
That's where I always wait for my fans. Uh, where my fans always wait for me. Nice save. Didn't even notice a thing. Remember, tough as iron, quiet as a mouse. Oh, believe me, it's been a whole game now, and I will never forget. Gideon's Rock is right behind the gate. There's a colossal, man-eating beast out there. And a lot of hunters playing war. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, if you ask me. Yeah, they're gonna get all their stupid selves killed. So I suppose I'd better go kill them first, before the beast steals all the kills from me. Hello. That logo on your head looks a bit familiar, sir. Rebooting OS. Ah, good day to you. I'm Harold. You seem to have caught me with my firewalls down. How embarrassing. I am in charge of scouting capable warriors willing to hunt down a massive creature at the Artificial Wildlife Resort, Gideon's Rock. Please excuse the system malfunction. My network has been hacked. A mere human wouldn't come and... Well, actually, I'm a bit more familiar with power surges than you might think, sir. My master, Joan Gutenberg, has been out of his mind with worry about Jericho City's night problem. He's been working 24-7 to find a way out. Whoever delivers the brain of the strange creature wreaking havoc at Gideon's Rock will be rewarded amply. I have already hired Miss Black and her jolly band of mercenaries over there. However, they have been ineffective so far, apart from stabbing each other in the back. Wow. I guess Gutenberg really is in the city. Okay, sure. Yeah, sign me up. Be warned, friend. If you don't succeed in your mission, the Nanites will be unstoppable in no time. Even I won't be able to fight back much longer. Luckily, my existence is of no importance. I'm just a soulless automaton, after all. Slay the fiend, and deliver its brain to the Creo Institute of Technology. That's all I ask, friend. Okay, to the Creoit we go, then. Sorry, my small talk routines are damaged. Oh, so are mine. That's why I do commentary solo a lot of the time. I am a cloud-based silicon ballet operated at the Create Institute of Technology. I can download into different robotic host bodies. An external force is currently trying to compromise my system integrity. I don't know how much longer I will be able to fight back. I just want to say that Silicon Valley is probably the worst pun I've ever heard in my life. I love it. It's the best. Athena? How peculiar. My master had a grandchild by that very same name. She went missing after a... Oh, wait. Access denied. Excuse me, friend. I won't be able to divulge that information until my hacked databases are repaired. That's okay, you've been more than helpful. I suppose now we have a reason to go kill the beastie other than the fact that I just want to. Good luck out there, friend. Initiating recovery mode. I guess next time we'll be killing the Nanite Mutant and salvaging its brain. I will see you all next time when we get started on the long, arduous quest to do such a thing at Gideon's Rock. <laughs>